<laughs> oh world welcome to another DD beyond dev update uh i'm joe i'm uh now i can't stop talking marching band metaphors right before we went live we were talking about marching band um uh hi i'm joe i'm the section leader for the low brass of uh, yes. this dev update <laughs> Uh, my cats are fighting at my feet violently. I don't know what to do. Melly, uh, introduce yourself real quick because you're back. I missed you. I am back. Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm Melly Deason, the community manager for D&D Beyond. Um, I was not in marching band, so I cannot relate to the <laughs> metaphors. I'm so sorry. Well, you know, you you missed out, kid. Uh, I know. Uh, it was a joy. Let us know in chat what you played in marching band or what you wish you had played. And if you graduated to ska, like I did. Um, <laughs> hey, guys, today natural we're talking about <laughs> natural progression for marching band to picking it up. Um, hey, guys, today we're not talking about ska music exclusively today on the dev update, although I wish we were. Uh, we're talking about... <laughs> We're talking about something equally reviled, uh, our homebrew system. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm just setting them up for a win. Uh, uh, Dave Hartless, our VP of engineering is coming oh on to, 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 to do an FAQ and a Q&A with you guys about mm -hmm. homebrew, um, how it works, why it worked that way, uh, maybe some, some visions of where he sees it heading in the future. So get those homebrew questions in chat, locked and loaded. Instead of doing like a separate Q&A at the end, we're gonna do it throughout. So make sure you're getting those questions into chat. And mm -hmm. when uh, Melly discovers moments where I'm a bad interviewer, she will pick up the slack by asking Dave questions, which I'm super excited about. But before we get into that, let's get into our uh, timeline for What's coming up? So, our timeline. Uh, what's going on now? Uh, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, obviously available for pre order right now on the DD Marketplace. Uh, you will be getting uh, perks to go with that. Uh, if you go down the page a little bit, you'll see that those perks are. Uh, are, are going to be revealed soonish. Uh, how soonish? Soonish? I've actually been uh, a lot of people have been pleasantly trying to uh, solve the equation of what now soon soonish and soonish actually means, which I really appreciate. Uh, so uh, continue I, to I solve the like, puzzle. I feel like yeah, they'll they might be surprised at at how maybe they aren't necessarily mathematically equivalent. No, no. Uh, if I could do anything with mathematical equivalents, uh, I would not have gotten into the career that I got into. Uh, that said, you can pre-order the book now. Um, I am currently, uh, no big deal, but I'm currently on my second read through of the book. It's really dope. Um, if, if your response to the announcement was like, ugh, they're going back to Ravenloft, that's like 10% of the book. Um, Again, don't quote me on mathematical accuracy there because I'm an idiot, but it's it's so there's just so much cool stuff in in terms of like introducing all sorts of different genres of horror, uh, really cool monsters, interesting, blah, 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 you know, without getting into, you know, stuff that Wizards doesn't quite want us revealing quite yet. It's so much more than just going back to Barovia, right? Yeah. It's so much more than just like another follow up to Curse of Strahd. It, it, it's, it's really, really, really cool. I. I, I can't recommend that either you pick it up or you pester your DM to pick it up and then make them subscribe to DDB so that then they can share it with you so that you can read it during the game uh, mm -hmm. that you're playing when you're supposed to be listening to him give exposition. Uh, or she, both male, female, and non-binary uh, DMs can be boring enough uh, to make you read the book. Um, yeah, equal uh, opportunity. Instead of listening um, to them. Yeah, yeah equal opportunity poor DMing. Also, yeah. you know, if, if you want to get this book and you don't have people to run it for, I I want to play in all of the things that this book presents. So, you know, there's definitely going to be lots of people that want to play this with you. Uh, and you can probably find those people in our community spaces on our Discord. And you will have an amazingly dreadful time. Dreadful being, you know, like, like a, a reference one. to the book and not that it's going to be not fun. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a I'm a big spooky stuff fan, and yeah, this uh, this this uh, this tickles a lot of fancies. So I'm I'm excited. Uh, also, now dice rolling on monster stat blocks on the encounter builder and combat tracker uh, is in alpha. It's live now. That's available to subscribers. Uh, it's a great feature. Uh, my little home pod game actually uh, started using it uh, this past Sunday as we uh, continued our adventures. Uh, 
in uh, in Icewind Dale. Uh, so that was super, super fun to like watch my DM actually like jump in and start using them. Uh, so make sure you're checking that out. It's super, super cool. It is it is uh, just another step forward on the uh, on the the massive evolution that the encounter builder and combat tracker are going to continue uh, to take. So we're really excited about that. Uh, again, that's in alpha. It's available to subscribers. Um, I'm going to remove the camera on top of my laptop that I'm not actually using and only look into the one that I am using because um, <laughs> I'm just looking directly hardcore at nothing. Just like, hey guys, welcome to the dev update. Because you're wondering why like there's something over the camera that is a uh, terrifying <laughs> joke. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> just a, uh, uh, yeah, just a, just a lich, just uh, hovering in the corner. Um, uh, I have a haunted one background and they're waiting for me. Mm. Uh, coming mm. soon, uh, the consolidated app launch uh, that includes spell management, that includes, um, uh, well, includes a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Will, uh, we have a trailer we can run. The only thing I don't want you to pay attention to on this trailer, because it's a commercial design for the launch of the app, is the part at the end where they tell you to download it today. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, don't try but to do Mark, that. Uh, you won't be able to get it. Well, I mean, uh, we'll run the thing, and then I'll, and then I'll talk more. Yeah, it's the perfect tool set for beginners, regular oh. players. And We're running it matters. while I'm still on Play camera. Start with the guided character creator. <laughs> it's it looks very good. It, I think it looks really, really cool. Uh, so again, the, the point of this app, you know, there used to be the reader app, there used to be the player app. Uh, those things are now merged into one sort of, so that it's one tool for both DMs and players um, with, uh, you know, a lot of updates and features uh, to come uh, so that it can keep growing. But I love uh, uh, search and reference and, and bookmarking is such a cool feature to be able to have if you've got spells and rules that you go back to a lot. I think that that stuff is so, so cool. Uh, again, spell management, finally, um, I, I think it's going to be rad. We did a dev update on this last week. The VOD of that is going to drop this Saturday. I know that timeline's wonky. Just go with it. Um, so again, we're super excited about this. Can you download the new app today? No, but you can download the player app today and it will automatically upgrade uh, into the consolidated app. So if you want to just go ahead and do that, uh, you can. So in a way, the, you know, the trailer's not completely lying to you, right? Yeah, mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. Go get the DDD player app right now and you can check it out and play with your characters on there. Uh, and then when this other app goes out, you'll be able to just boop update and all of a sudden you have all of the apps in one, which is Heck pretty yeah. delightful. Heck yeah. Uh, also coming soon, Jasper's Game Week uh, is coming soon. You can still uh, bid uh, for seats at so many cool tables. Go to Jasper's Game Day's uh, website uh, to find out how you can do that. And I think we have uh, uh, maybe some links. Sorry, I always put the mods like totally on the spot on links. I apologize. Um, uh, we have some, our mods some are so direct amazing. links. They're really, really good. Um, but we have some some links uh, for uh, for ways for you to get involved. There's some really amazing people on there uh, uh, DMing. I'm on there, uh, which but, but I'm lucky enough to have like uh, some really cool people at my table. Latia, uh, Mod Garrett is going to be at my table, so I'm I'm super pumped about that. Uh, you know, Todd's DMing a couple of seats. Teen Phoenix is DMing. Uh, I, th I think Adam's DMing this round. Adam, Riley yeah. Silverman's DMing. Or in um, Urban as well. In Urban. Uh, Deborah Ann Wall is DMing. So there are uh, a lot of really, really amazing people uh, that you can you can bid to get on there. If if playing on a stream isn't your thing, still tune in to watch uh, because there's going to be way you uh, there's going to be ways to uh, to interact uh, with the games uh, via donation. So you know whether it's buying re rolls or I think in my game you'll be able to donate uh, to create actual NPCs that I'm going to be forced to drop into my session. Um, so yeah, so lots of ways to interact and and, and continue to support. Uh, so please, please, it's it's for suicide prevention. It's for mental health awareness. Those are those are big deals to me. They're big deals to our community. Uh, so thankful that D&D Beyond is continuing to work with Jasper. So please uh, uh, get involved if you can. We appreciate it. Uh, next week, Anthony Pegg, our Senior Director of Product Management, uh, is going to be on to uh, to give you guys just like a, a, a pretty like solid roadmap uh, to the future in terms of like um, 
uh, how tools are going to start tying together and where we're sort of headed. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, get your spicy, spicy questions ready uh, for Anthony, because, you know, uh, sometimes we have guests who are kind of like, I can't really talk about that yet because someone will kill me. Anthony's the person who's in charge of killing them, uh, as I understand our org chart, at least. And so, I, you know, is there someone above Anthony that can kill Anthony? I don't know. So you know, get rid of those spicy questions ready uh, for Mr. Pegg. And I'm sure he really appreciates me uh, setting him up like that. Um, so yeah, so get ready for that next week. That's going to be super cool. Also coming soon, a new content team? What? What? Oh wow! Uh, I got a, I got some backup on the way. We got uh, someone. Uh, someone put a quarter into the arcade machine, and the, here comes a new challenger. Uh, uh, a little uh, notification just popped up. I'm super excited. Uh, you guys are going to be meeting some cool new faces soon. Uh, what does that mean? What does that doesn't? What, what does that doesn't mean? Uh, what does that mean? What doesn't it mean? Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, I'm going anywhere. It does mean you're gonna start seeing some new faces on camera. Uh, it does mean you're gonna see start seeing some new bylines over uh, at dndbeyond.com uh, with our incredible editorial team. Uh, I, I'm super excited. Uh, having, having folks, uh, you know, Publicly for you guys means you're going to get some new faces on camera, some new people to get to know. Um, having them for me means that uh, I am no longer uh, a one man band like Dick Van Dyke yes. and Mary Poppins just desperately trying to uh, play the whole symphony by myself. Yeah, I don't so think having... people realize just like how many, <laughs> uh, you know, hats you've been having to wear over the past, you know, couple months. And it's, it's a lot of hats. Uh, it's a lot but... of hats. I, I have some new, some really incredible folks that I think you guys are going to be very excited about are coming on to wear some hats with me. Uh, and that means we're really going to, uh, to be able to focus on uh, some new formats, some new show ideas, uh, just some fun things to try and do. Uh, so I'm, I'm stoked about that. I can't wait for you guys uh, uh, to meet these folks. I'm, I'm, they're great. I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, Soon-ish, again, uh, Van Richten's Guide, Pre-Order Perks Reveal, Digital Dice, um, uh, character sheet frames themes backgrounds all that good stuff uh the the concepts for the dice again uh sound awesome so i'm, I'm super excited for what we've got coming for van richten's guide to ravenloft and then again coming soon is uh sort of a new feedback flow um i want you guys to know you don't have to take my word for it look i know that i'm like my job here is like the used car salesman of dnd beyond so like i know that you know i, I i'm biased right but I do want you guys to know that wherever your feedback comes from, whether it's this chat or whether it's the comment section on the VODs on YouTube or whether it's the forums or whether it's an all caps, very angry tweet, it gets heard, right? Like, again, just the hive of people behind us actually building this system and building this tool set are, are just really impressive. And, um, and so that feedback gets dropped in and it gets seen. Um, we retired that Trello board a little while back. You know, there was that sort of public facing Trello board with like, here's what's going on. Um, I wasn't too worried about that Trello board being retired because quite frankly, I think we sort of unofficially retired it like long before we finally- It was not very well kept in general. Yeah. And you know, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, do you want me updating the, do you want us, uh, the royal me? Do you want DDB updating the Trello board or do you want those people who are in charge of updating the Trello board actually updating tool sets and, and you know, so, uh, but we do have a, uh, we're working on a new way to really efficiently flow feedback from you guys to the relevant people involved. Uh, that system will be in place here in a couple of weeks and we're going to have uh, both Pat and Andrew uh, back on, you guys know them. Uh, they'll be back on to sort of discuss what that is and how that works. Uh, pretty soon. Uh, so again, super excited about that. And then, um, you know, soonish, uh, some some cool things that I'm not allowed to talk about because my job is clown. Uh, but you know whose job is not clown, Melly? Dave Hartless, our VP of engineering slash dashing rogue. Let's bring him back to the show. You guys know Dave. Love Dave. I love, hey, I love that you picked rogue because that is my favorite class. Uh, you, we have a full, full dis, let, let's pull back the curtain. We have a work game going, and uh, you and followed, play a followed role. secondly, very closely by Bard. Uh, I do love to play Bard it. as well. I get it. I so. get it. Uh, um, in our in our Tomb of Annihilation game at work, uh, is there any chance that uh, your character will eventually multi-class into a Bard? 
Uh, my good sir, I may have to say that that is a very likely outcome. Oh, David, it's too early for that. Just handsome, <laughs> handsome Southern accent. Hang on, I got the vapors. Um, <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, Dave, if you do this whole homebrew walkthrough in that accent, people might be less mad about homebrew. Uh, oh, um, uh, you might. You, might uh, you set yourself up over. for this, Dave. All right, I can do it. <clears throat> I can do it. <laughs> please, I apologize. Please, please do. I apologize to everybody in advance. I will do my best. Uh, um, no, sir. No, no apologies necessary. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, appreciate your shout out to my good friend, our senior director of product management, Anthony Pegg, or as he likes to be called, Ant. Uh, he is a great partner to me and our engineering staff. He himself has been an engineer. Uh, most people may not know that he holds 11 patents. I would be sure to embarrass him with that in fact next week. Um, no, but but no. seriously, Ant's, Ant's really a, a great, great partner to us. Uh, really uh, am excited about him coming on the stream and talking about our future, you know, going forward um, mm -hmm. and, and the things that we're looking at doing. Um, so homebrew. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if I can carry the Southern accent all the way through this. So uh, okay. Uh, if, if you, if you want to just zing it in every now and then for emphasis <laughs> or to yeah, just soften it. Yeah. Or if you know your answer is going to make chat upset, maybe soften the blow a little bit. <laughs> um that that might Give be a little sweet talk it. yeah but, yeah uh, so but dave yeah what i was hoping was you know uh uh for one thing we, we have this great faq actually on the forums that we're sort of mm -hmm. going to surface mm -hmm. today and let you guys know exists right. Right. uh but we'd love to just like walk a little bit through you know some some how's it's and and who's it's and uh you know why is it's really right right so so uh jay uh g pyromania on on the forums um, I know him as Jay. Uh, he has been here since day one. Like, uh, if you, mm -hmm. his join date is March 20th, 2017. That was the day we announced beta and opened up registration. So he has been here uh, with DDB since day one and, you know, has been contributing more and more over time. Uh, and his responsibilities have recently increased as well. So congrats, Jay. Um, and he's done a lot of work in trying to demystify the way our current homebrew forms work. And he's covered several topics in the existing thread, which, which you see now. Um, and, and, and there's still a few more to go, uh, but they're all recent, they're all fresh with the existing system as it works today. And, and we know it is not extremely user-friendly. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, when we were originally building a site, there were two of us. It was me and another front end engineer. And, we created some data entry forms just to get data into the system. And then, you know, over the next few months, and this is back in 2016, 2017, we brought on another couple of engineers to work specifically just on the character sheet. Uh, so it was still up to just me and another engineer just to try to start making these forms a little more user friendly so that people could actually homebrew things. And the problem is, is that they're built around our internal data model concepts, which a lot of people just aren't going to understand out of the gate. I mean, you're not on our team. You're not looking at the actual underlying database. You may not know what a modifier actually means, you know, and uh, we've always wanted to circle back around to these forms and really improve the UX and make it much more user friendly. Um, and we just, you know, unfortunately, you know, up to this time have not had the time to do that. Um, I, I was actually working on a presentation a couple of weeks ago and, and went back and looked at the number of engineers we've had over time since we started. And we originally started uh, uh, like late spring, early summer of uh, 2017. So around April to June-ish timeframe is when we actually started doing some of our initial proof of concepts and prototypes. Um, and from that point uh, until uh, 2017, we only had two engineers, me and a front end engineer. And then, uh, you know, we uh, brought on two more engineers to work specifically on the character sheet. And then late 2017, we brought on two more engineers just to work on the mobile app the reader mobile app, right? The ones where you can mm -hmm. download your, your books and access those. Um, so all the way up from mid 2016, all the way through early 2019, we had six engineers and only four of those were focused on the web. 
And what you know, a lot of users may not realize is that everything, almost everything, uh, currently on the site is totally custom. Our forums, our CMS, our control panel, our marketplace, all of that is custom. None of that is off the shelf from another provider. And that's great in that we have total control over everything. It's bad in that we have total control and responsibility <laughs> over everything. So yeah. when the business comes to you and says, hey, you need to implement sales tax collection, guess what? That falls on us. Guess what we're not doing while we're implementing sales tax collection? These other things like improving our homebrew UX, right? So, uh, you know, unfortunately, the early years of DDB were extremely resource constrained. Um, and some of the things that people have asked for, like, you know, why can't I homebrew just a, a normal item? Well, you know, a katana is going to do 1d8 just like a longsword. Add a longsword and customize it and change the name on the character sheet. And that's, that's not the right answer. It's a way to get it done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, we want to get to a point to where we give our DMs and our players a lot more flexibility in the system. Um, and, and that's going to be by expanding these homebrew tools. A lot of people don't realize, well, most of our players probably realize, but um, you know, the majority of campaigns that are run are homebrew, they're not official. You know, people want to create those custom settings with their yeah. custom lore, their custom items, their custom spells, right? And the easier we can continue to make that happen, the better their lives are gonna be, right? And it's, I, I, I can say that, you know, going into 2019, uh, in 2020, and especially coming in 2021, we are expanding our engineering resources exponentially from where we started. You know, so the problem that we've always had is we've had these grand visions to do all these things. Homebrew classes, yeah, we want to do that. Homebrew Eldritch invocations, which we've been asked for forever. Yeah, we want to do that. But, you know, in our overall priority list, those were under some much bigger rocks. And in, and this year, we are finally able to start breaking through some of those much bigger rocks. Mm -hmm. So while we may not necessarily get to a full homebrew revamp this year, we're at least getting closer to it because we're getting some of these much bigger rocks, some of these virtual rocks out of the way. Right. Well, I, I mean, I appreciate the candor out the date out the out the gate, man. I really, I really, really, really do. Well, uh, I, I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. I built most of these forms. I know yeah. they're awful. You're the you know, I mean, I I was the one that had to do the homebrew forms for, uh, you know, several of the data models that we have, uh, you know, feats, uh, subclasses, mm -hmm. um, class feature options, the modifiers, you know, being able to add actions and modifiers onto all the different things, uh, sub, I already mentioned subclasses, races, you know, and, and I know they're not great, you know, but in, in that kind of initial startup scenario, this was like weekend work for me, you know? Yeah, so, no, and, and, it's, and it's not an excuse, you know, it's to help the community understand why things are at the state that they're at. Um, and, you know, it's always been a, a goal of mine to come back around to this and really improve the UX uh, for this system, as well as global search, you know? I, mm -hmm. I may have mentioned this before on earlier streams. We did global search in two weeks and I'm not bragging about that. I'm saying it's a problem that we did global search in two weeks because we know it could be much better than it is now. And yeah. we just have not had the capacity or the priority to get back to it relative to the other things that we had to do. So, you know, that is also on our radar now where before yeah. it wasn't even you know, a blip, like if you had your alien scanner out, you know, and you're boom, 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 boom. it wasn't even, it wasn't even showing up yet. Now it's at least starting to show up, you know, yeah. so it, it's, I, I, I don't want it to sound like we're trying to make excuses. Um, it's just the reality of, of the situation. Uh, but it's, you know, what I love is that the community voices these issues and voices these concerns and keeps bringing those back to us so that we can, you know, re-legitimize those issues and continue mm -hmm. to understand what their priority is and plan them appropriately, you know, and some of these things that the community's been waiting for, you know, are starting to move up 
the chain, so to speak, and getting closer and closer to us actually being able to execute on them. Yeah, well, you know, especially it's been cool sort of watching this this team uh, really start to be able to, uh, you know, to, to grow a little bit and watch you guys at least, you know, starting to move that process of getting that backup that I, I really think you guys deserve. Um, you know, to build towards, you know, again, like you say, that that feedback loop, and we'll be talking about that a lot with uh, this feedback process that we sort of uh, want to talk about. But, uh, you know, I sometimes we see feedback that's like, um, oh, you guys are off playing in this sandbox, and all all of us really want this. And, it, and it's like, you know, sometimes you see an update, and it's like, well, that's not the update I wanted. But ultimately, you know, the subscriber base and the community is the is the roadmap because if we're you know busy futzing around with something none of them care about and we're like oh but look at it you know what you know what are we doing um yeah but, and and one of the great things that can help our product managers is comment on the forums comment on twitter comment mm -hmm. on the on our on our discord server you know if this is a pain point for you let us know that you know don't sit back and be silent um, because that really weighs in how we prioritize things. So the more that we hear from the community on things that they need, mm -hmm. you know, the better that we can prioritize those overall. And I'm sure Ant will, you know, talk more about that next week as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, that's like all of the moderators and myself as well doing social media. Like we are the ones who are seeing all of that. And we're mm -hmm. the ones who are saying to, you know, Dave, to you and your teams and to all of the engineering teams, this is what we're seeing a lot of people Mm -hmm. wanting and asking for so right. if if y'all don't you know c communicate with us y'all don't come into our discord which you know links in the chat i'm sure come and see us and come and talk mm -hmm. to us and yeah. tell us your feelings and yeah. you know obviously like be nice about it because yeah, yeah, nice we're all it. working very hard and we're all part of the same community <laughs> but we definitely yeah. want to know like what things are important to you right and and i will say from um from the homebrew system as it exists today probably the most important part to learn and understand or how the modifiers work. That's really where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the things that actually execute code on your character sheet for the most part. If you want resistance to bludgeoning damage, if you want, um, you know, immunity to the poison condition, that really resolves down to the modifier that's going to set mm -hmm. that. And, and Go ahead. Uh, just to put you publicly on the spot, Dave, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of scheduling, I'd love to have you on, you know, just one of the live shows. It's one of these days to actually walk through that because that is a place mm -hmm. where my eyes glaze over and yeah. I start to bleed yeah. out my nose a little bit. Uh, yeah. So I, I'd love a, to, for us to do a walk through of that stuff. Yeah. And, you know, initially um, there were, you know, there were some modif so modifiers for us schematically, you know, from a data model standpoint, they're just labels. They're just text labels. That's all they are. Mm -hmm the code that actually turns those into functionality reside in our character sheet and character builder, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, react libraries. So we have to write code that actually turns those into some kind of functionality. Uh, right. You know, we are looking at ways in the future to make that a little more open. Uh, those of you that have created add-ons for WoW may understand a little bit about what I'm talking about there. Um, but that's probably a few years, you know, into the future, realistically. Um, and, and inadvertently in the past, we've exposed some modifiers that we created that were for a very specific use case because of a very specific rule, you know, and those actually never should have been exposed to the normal users because you see it, you think it's going to do one thing and then it doesn't. And then that leads to confusion, right? So we've tried to limit those back down to just the ones that are, as you read them, um, mm -hmm. based on their names and their labels are going to execute as you think they would. And, and Jay's, you know, he's actually got an entire section on just the modifier system itself in, in his form thread that can kind of, you know, clarify a lot about how those work. Well, speaking of them users, Melly, yes. uh, I had, let's, uh, let, let's, let's throw some, uh, let's throw some hard balls. Let's throw some fast balls. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we balls. have obviously lots of questions as, yep. as you know about like homework classes and invocations, mm -hmm. which you've mm -hmm. already talked about, which is right. amazing. Uh, so we're going to go into some different things, some more, more specific things. So we've got yep. from, uh, 
Dar Jr. or Darger. Uh, Matt Colville at MCDM has mentioned he'd like to have some of his products on digital places but can't on D&D Beyond. Uh, any plans for like third parties like MCDM to have content? Uh, how did the Nerdarchy hosting go? Uh, uh, I appreciate the question. This is something that has been thought about for since we were in beta. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I will say uh, with the original team, when we were working on this product in 2016, 2017, very rarely do I hear anything out of the community that we had not already thought about all the way back then. So our inability to act on some of these things could fall into several categories. One, we just have not had the capacity to get to it. Two, there may be other extenuating circumstances of why we could not get to it. So I will leave the answer to that question at that. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I, I think uh, one thing I will uh, add to this is I, I know we have a problem sometimes with um, with people taking, uh, you know, third party products like what Matt's talking about, mm -hmm. you know, stuff mm -hmm. on drive through and, you know, mm -hmm. really incredible things that people have been creating on Kickstarter. People right. sort of take them and create them as homebrew yep. uh, on mm -hmm. D&D Beyond and, I will, let's see here, what's my careful way of saying this? I'm going to say don't don't support that unless it's official. I think, you know, we're all one community, whether D&D whether &D Beyond is working directly with someone or not, whether we're working directly with Matt or Nerdarchy um, uh, or Cobalt or, you know, whoever else. We're all one community. And I, you know, if, if something's taking, you know, uh, food off of somebody else's table in this community, uh, don't 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 support it so you know if you exactly. see stuff like that you know yeah um because uh, so, there's a lot of really talented people yeah and if, if you if you you know have purchased that content and you create it for yourself using the homebrew system so that you can use it in your games absolutely uh you do not have to share the yeah. content that you create in order for you to use it All in right. your campaigns for your players in your campaigns to add it to their characters it's Sharing it is to say, hey, I created this and I want to share it with everybody on D&D Beyond. So only do that if you did create that, if that's your original content. If it's not your original content, please just keep it private on your own account uh, and enjoy it for yourself. Right. So that is uh, that that is our stipulation and our guidance in that. And, and a point that I wanted to bring up in this conversation, if you create Homebrew on your account as a DM or as a player, mm -hmm. uh, it will get automatically shared with anybody in your campaigns. You do not, I repeat, do not have to publish that to share it with your campaigns. The only time you would ever want to actually hit the publish button is if you want to share it with the entire community of millions of users. If, if this is licensed content that you have bought from somebody else, Matt, you know, Kobold, um, uh, you know, any number of critters on DMs uh, Guild. Crit critical role, anything mm -hmm. from DMs Guild, do not publish that because you are taking away from somebody else's work. If you want to recreate it in our homebrew system just to use in your own private campaigns, that's fine. Yeah. You know, that is, I can that say is, I've, I've done that for many things. I've got tons of books right. on here from different Kickstarters and I just put right. it up in my, my own account so that I can use it because I use D&D Beyond for absolutely everything. Yep. But I would never hit that publish button for anything right. I did not create. Please do not do yeah. that yourself. Right. Uh, and then we'll have a whole big homebrew library of stuff that the people on DDB on have created themselves and really want to share, yep. which is also very exciting. And there's lots of great stuff on here. Yep. Speaking yeah. of which, from Locket Ring, um, do, there are certain homebrew creators that this person would like to keep track of. Is there a plan to add a favorite list of creators or, you know, maybe more ways to kind of collect your favorite content or follow people uh, with their creations? Uh, you know, we, we have seen that request before, not extremely often, um, but there are possibilities of ways to do that, not not currently, um, but I can see some relatively easy ways to implement that kind of system. Um, you know, something kind of tangentially on that conversation that um, I was uh, talking to Lou Anders, uh, who is an author here in Alabama as well, he's in Birmingham. Uh, he currently has a, a Kickstarter for a fifth edition setting. Um, and, and he was lamenting uh, to me of, you know, the inability to, uh, you know, like share 
homebrew with just specific campaigns. You know, that's uh, when we first implemented that system, we knew that was going to be a problem before we even launched. Right. And it, again, it's one of those scenarios where we just have not had the capacity yet to come back around to it. Um, because I myself as a user and a DM, uh, you know, know that that's an issue that I'm just sharing, you know, all of my homebrew content with every campaign that I join, uh, which is not a great, you know, user experience. So, you know, the ability to like group homebrew and categorize those and share those out with just specific campaigns is, you know, always an idea and a concept that we've had as well. Um, you know, and that kind of falls in line with this question of like, you know, hey, I have, you know, Luke 7S that I want to follow with, you know, Dungeons and Doggos um, and, and, you know, really just, you know, play in that kind of setting. How do I follow just him specifically? Uh, so that's, you know, one thing that we've looked at as, as well and, and have some concepts around how to do that. It's, again, just finding the time and the priority to do that. Thanks. I uh, we've got time for another one, Joe. Mm -hmm. We're good. Okay. Then yeah, Kale the that. Adventurer asks, uh, what degree of versatility would you like to see in the homebrew builder? And what degree of versatility is it reasonable for users to expect? So you know, from an overall architecture and data model standpoint, obviously this is not all freeform text. You can't just write mm -hmm. what you want and expect to get actual programmatic functionality out of that um, without it being horribly brittle. You know, we're not going to regex every text string that somebody could think to put in, right? It's just not feasible. Um, and, and this is something that I've mentioned in a, a multitude of conversations over the, the past several months and, and just talking about the overall architecture of DDB. You know, a lot of a lot of game systems that get created on Dungeons and Dragons rule sets, you know, even to way back, you know, you go back to the original Baldur's Gate, hey, you can go back to Pools of Radiance, you know, Neverwinter Nights, uh, you know, even BG3 that, that's in alpha right now, um, you know, the, 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 a lot of these game studios, they will pick a subset of the rule set and build the game around that because handling all these different one-offs and exceptions becomes very cost prohibitive for them. Like it would take them 10 years to build a game. And, you know, what is the, the actual return on that? And, you know, I, I posit that what we're trying to do on DDB is more complex than almost any other video game that's ever been built for D&D because we are trying to progress towards covering the entire rule set, all the exceptions, all the one-offs. You know, we finally got back to implementing Life Domain, you know, just uh, a month or two mm -hmm. ago. You know, and finally got it released and published. And, you know, to, to really progress towards the level of customization that I would like to see out of our systems, we've got to get a couple of other systems in place, right? And one of those is the generic, what we internally call the generic feature system, which uh, the characters team, who is responsible for the character sheet and the character builder, is currently working on as of this week. You know, I, I have no problem saying that and putting that out there. Um, and this is to cover a lot of the other rules that we currently don't cover, like epic boons, piety, renown, organizations, all those kind of things. And it's going to take them a while to get there because once you sit down and actually read the rules and map those out and try to turn those into a data schema and figure out how you're going to handle these programmatically at scale, and by scale, I mean 100,000 concurrent users, it gets pretty complex. Um, there could be potential circular references in that data that you have to account for. And, you know, it's going to take us a little while to get there, um, but we will get there because we have a great team now. They're fully staffed and fully engaged on, on solving these kind of issues, but handling and solving those kind of problems are going to lead us much further into, you know, finally getting to like fully homebrew classes, you know, where you have a lot more flexibility as a DM and as a world builder to go in and, and, and build those out and flesh those mm -hmm. out. So it's not around the corner. It's not next week. You know, it's still going to take us to some time to get there, but we're finally at the point now of actually solving these problems 
versus just hoping to one day solve these problems. You know. No, thank you, Dave. I think, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you, you, A, you just gave us a heck of a tease with a cool new tool. Uh, mm -hmm. You said the word homebrew classes, which, um, uh, you know, I, I know is, is a biggie. Um, I, I think that's a solid place to wrap us up today. We'll definitely have you back on. Uh, Melly, I'm assuming there are probably 20 to 30 more questions in the hopper. So that means- Oh, you uh, know it. There's, there's lots of people who want to know more about homebrew. And actually, there's actually a lot of people asking, you know, very specific, like, how do I do this thing with homebrew? Right. Or why can't I publish this kind of content with homebrew? Mm -hmm. And I will just say really quickly, um, the forums, the Discord, there are- amazing sections where you can ask questions about home where you can get some help from other users and from moderators about how to do certain things so if you yeah. didn't get that answered uh today or by even the chat hop into those spaces and ask mm -hmm. your questions there because people will yeah. be able to help yep and uh and uh I, if, if anything for my team it's very clear that i should probably do a video series on this as well uh <laughs> so again appreciate your all's questions appreciate you guys being here uh, appreciate your energy and being a part of this community. Uh, Dave, thank you so, so much uh, for coming on. You know, I don't know if Absolutely. necessarily people heard what they really like wanted to hear, but like, I, you know, I always appreciate you guys kind of coming on and being like, this is how it is and here's where we're going. Uh, I really, really do. Thank you so much. Yep, absolutely. More than, more than happy to come back anytime you need me to. We will, uh, yeah, no, we'll definitely be seeing you again soon. Melly, you're okay. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, I literally can't do the show without you. I tried last week. Um, and we'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys next week with Aunt Peg. Uh, so again, get those. Get, just get ready to put his feet to the fire. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a great stream. Thank you guys. See you soon. Yep. Yo. Ha, 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 ha!